when it comes to these kind of stories, everybody, and I repeat everybody, those on the left, those on the right, and those anywhere in between, everyone is all too quick to judge and to try and push their own narrative onto these sort of things. The media, in this instant, doesn't help. They'll push a specific narrative that helps them. And that goes for all sources, that goes for people like CNN and Fox News. People will push a narrative if it benefits their political party, and we should really stop doing that. I know outrage clicks get, or sorry, outrage gets clicks, which in turn gets ad rev, but we should stop doing this with people's lives. It only creates division and it only creates more heartbreak, heart bloodshed and destruction. In case you guys haven't heard or you've been living under a rock, this man, Jacob Blake, was shot seven times in the back by police. Now, if you don't know any facts behind the story, that's going to seem like a bad thing. And it is, it's tragic. But there are other factors at play that some people don't necessarily want to discuss and we'll be getting that onto, onto that later but I have a roundup of about four articles that I'm going to be going through and summarising and it's basically a timeline of as the more information has come out how the narrative and the views change. Cops were called, uh, were called and they responded to that call and they had a suspect, they went to go and arrest a suspect and the suspect fought them off, went to his car and lunged into it and that's when he was shot. Now, he is alive, he didn't die. They say he may be paralysed but that could wear off in time. We don't know yet but he's not dead but that doesn't stop people from, well, acting like he was. Jacob Blake reportedly fighting for his life following police shooting. We now know he's out of the woods and completely, well, we'll, we'll say completely fine because that. But Jacob Blake is reportedly fighting for his life, life after being shot at least seven times by police officers in Kenosha, Wisconsin on Sunday afternoon, August 23rd. As reported by Revolt, the 29-year-old black father, doesn't matter his race, had been breaking up a fight between two women when police responded to a quote-unquote domestic incident. We now know that that is a lie. A horrific video showed Blake being tased and then shot in his back by officers tragically in front of his young children. Now, I want you to focus on this. You'll get people say, why didn't they just use the non-lethal option? They tried. The non-lethal option failed. That is always a possibility and that is always a huge possibility. Things like that fail. And they have a foul, I think they have a foul rate higher than the success rate, but they still try to do it. According to a police statement, Blake was treated for his injuries and quickly transported to the Fred Turt Hospital in Milwaukee. The officers involved have been placed on administrative leave. As of Monday morning, August 24th, Blake is reportedly out of surgery and being held in the hospital's intensive care unit. Milwaukee's TMJ4 news reporter Lauren Linda shared the update from Blake's brother on Twitter. Jacob Blake's brother tells me Jacob is still fighting for his life, Linda tweeted. He says he's just got out of surgery as in, in, and is in the ICU. Blake's cousin who goes by, what if I don't care, shared a similar message. But NBA agent Daniel Poneman, who went to school with Blake, also wrote that Blake is out of surgery. I just spoke with Jacob's cousin Paulie in the hospital. He said that they need your prayers and, a, and not condolences. He's out of surgery and in the ICU. He, he he can make this through. He's fighting for his life. Please, please, please pray that Jake pray for Blake Jacob Blake. He basically goes to summarise that he's probably going to be paralysed, not paralysed. Uh, that he's out of out of basically out of the woods. But here's where the narrative starts to break down. This next article is going to contain some very I'm not going to just say triggering aspects, but it's going to be featuring some depictions of some crimes that will probably get this video demonetized. So obviously, if you do see ads on this video, it's probably YouTube's own doing and not via me. So there we go. 
Cops opened fire on Jacob Blake five minutes after being called to reports he'd taken woman's keys, a scanner reveals. This narrative, that he had been breaking up a fight between two women, is already being broken down and being debunked. Cops opened fire on Jacob Blake five minutes after being called to reports that he had allegedly taken a woman's keys, a police scanner has revealed. The audio obtained by Madison365 said that said that a woman called the police to report that Blake was at her home and was not supposed to be and that he had allegedly taken her keys and was not returning them. That in my opinion is taken without consent or twock as we call it here in the UK. A dispatcher then relayed the message to patrol officers that at roughly 5.11pm on Sunday, just one minute after the initial call, the dispatcher said that Blake was leaving the premises and that the woman who had initially reported the situation had hung up. Five minutes in, an officer can be heard reporting shots fired and additional cops were then sent to the scene. Just 40 seconds later, an officer requested re uh, rescue ASAP, which was presumably for seriously injured Blake. Now, if this does contain any videos, I won't be playing them because I'm not going to be risking my channel for this. Unfortunately, I can't risk my channel. On Sunday evening, shocking footage emerged showing Blake 29 being gunned down by cops in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Um, our witness code KRE11 -E Blake wasn't armed or aggressive when he tried to break up a fight between two women before he was shot on 40th Street anniversary, uh, 40th Street around 5pm. We now know that this that initial report there is a lie because he should not have been on a premises where he was, so he was basically criminal trespassing. He was supposed to be celebrating his son's 8th birthday, reported the Chicago Sun's time. It doesn't matter. Instead, the father of six was shot at least seven times in the back, uh, in the back, in the back in front of his three sons. Commas, please. Who was sitting in the SUV as he tried to enter the vehicle. Now, why was he trying to enter the vehicle? We don't know that yet. Well, we do now, but we don't know. At this point, we didn't know. If you have been told by police, Blake was shot in the back as he tried to walk away, reports say. That's false. He was shot in the back after they, the cops tried to tase him and as he was actively inside the car and as they were trying to drag him out he went to go and reach for something so they obviously did what they did Blake was transferred to Frio Hospital in Milwaukee after he was shot the WID I think that's Wisconsin uh, the Department of Justice said where he remains in serious condition and in, in an emotional video posted in his in, into his Instagram stories the victim's dad Jacob Blake Sr. said there was no justification for the horrific shooting after confirming his son was alive and stable you say that but we'll let people decide for themselves after the rest of the information comes out this S, sorry, the S I tell you, yo, is real, man. No matter what they say, it doesn't justify shooting my son in the back eight times. None of the S is justified by what I did to my son. You hit him with eight shots, you take nothing that's not yours, forget it. You can't take nothing that's not yours, forget it. Well, funny you should say that, given what your son did to earn the, uh, yeah, but there. Uh, and then we get this gem. Family attorney says Jacob Blake did not have a weapon in his car. Kenosha attorney, uh, the attorney for Jacob Blake's family said Wednesday that Jacob Blake did not have a weapon in his car when he was shot by police. Attorney Patrick Salvi Jr. Uh, spoke with CNN Wednesday morning and gave updates on Blake's condition. He said Blake is expected to survive but is paralyzed from the waist down. We were actually given a point of blank range uh, point blank range from which these shots were fired it appears to he's he is going to survive now you take that the fact that he was shot was so close and so and well so many times so close and he still survived and you get people asking why sh cops have to shoot so many times well when you're hocked up on adrenaline bullets especially small caliber like nine millimeter will do absolutely nothing they 
there are videos out there where someone can be sh can literally be shot like anything up to seven or eight times right in their torso and coming for the person and they still manage to close that gap and still manage to get an attack off on the person doing the firing that's because adrenaline makes it so that you can't feel the bullets I mean eventually you do succumb to your injuries but you do have to get shot a lot Blake was shot while uh, while walking towards the driver's side of his vehicle. No, he wasn't. See how they were already trying to spin a false narrative. He wasn't shot while walking to a car. He was wal he was shot while he was in his car going to grab for something. They'll sit there and say he wasn't armed. Well, about that. According to the Department of Justice, Jacob Blake had a knife when officers tried to arrest him. Kenosha, uh, a man shot by Kenosha police officer, after, officer admitted he... Now, this isn't just Department of Justice saying willy-nilly, oh, he had a gun, so it's justified. No. Jacob Blake himself had admitted to having a knife in his possession. Yeah. A man shot by Kenosha police officer admitted to he had a... a knife sh he had a knife in his possession according to Wisconsin Department of Justice according to a preliminary report from the Department of Justice a woman called the police on Sunday evening saying her boyfriend was there and wasn't supposed to be on the premises the Department of Justice did not exist did not specify if Jacob Blake was the boyfriend after police responded to a call they tried to arrest Blake one officer used a taser but it didn't stop Blake who is seen on a bystander's video walking away from officers and leaving, sorry, and leaning into his SUV when he was shot by an officer from behind. The Department of Justice identified the officer as Ro uh, Rustin Shesky, a patrol officer and a member of Kenosha Police Department for seven years. It's, it says he fired his service weapon seven times while grabbing Blake by the shirt. No officers fired a weapon. Sorry, no other officers fired a weapon. There have been interviews conducted of material witness, but the investigation remains ongoing, says Attorney General Josh Cole, and during a press conference on Wednesday in Kenosha. The Department of Justice's Dep uh, Division of Criminal Investigation is handling the investigation into the officer involved shooting. DCI agents found a knife on the driver's side floor of Blake's SUV and no other weapons. Now, if you're going to be leaning into your car while you're going to go and uh, it's not just willy nilly you can see him going to the driver side of the vehicle where the knife was this man was going to grab a weapon in my opinion now he could den he can deny it but when you have a look at all these circumstances and you look at everything building up to it and the more and more information we get that is the case and that is the that is the overwhelming possibility and the overwhelming I'm not even going to say the overwhelming chance I think that is an almost certainty at this point that that is what he was going for Blake survived the shooting sorry under Wisconsin law, in a case where a person dies where an officer fires their weapon, the law requires that an independent investigative agency be brought in to conduct the investigation. Blake survived the shooting. The family says he's paralyzed from the waist down and may not walk again. The DCI will present its findings to a prosecutor within 30 days to make a determination if criminal charges in the shooting are appropriate. When they, DCI, complete the investigation, it's turned over again by statute by law to the local district attorney's office and that will be our office says Kenosha Dis uh, County District Attorney Mike Gravely we are asked to review the, that independently garnered evidence and we are asked and huh, are there any crimes that a police officer has committed that can be proven to a jury beyond a reasonable doubt in this case I don't think so but the thing is these kind of things where they don't wait until the narrative or sorry, all the information is in to push a narrative causes people to get hurt as you get with these yesterday a 
two people were fatally shot by a man defending himself as you can see that on the video over these riots he was standing there trying to uh, protect buildings in his own words from riots caused by these fake narratives and unfortunately people attacked him and he had to take their lives and to defend himself that's going to haunt him for the rest of his life they've charged him with intentional first degree murder which won't stick in my opinion in every single video and every single angle you can possibly tell from the incident it was self defense now you can argue he shouldn't have been holding a weapon like that because he was 17 years old and you can argue that but there is no arguing that it was self defense and there is no arguing that the more and more information comes out about Jacob Blake the more and more it seems like a justified shooting unfortunately that's just the way it is I do not believe we should shoot people be obviously I'm a Brit we don't tend to do that I mean we do have officer shootings and we do have us an armed forces not an armed forces we have an armed section of our police force and they do end up sometimes having to put people down it is an unfortunate circumstance but we shouldn't have to people should just pay attention and people should just listen look if you feel an arrest is unjust just go with it go through all the process and sort it out later in the courts if you can prove beyond a reasonable doubt that it was an unjust arrest then go through the courts don't fight the cops don't go to grab for a weapon and then you won't have to face these consequences anyway let me know what you think in the comment section down below and I'll here is coming the shield obviously if you don't want to watch that then click off now but obviously for those that do I'll see you all in the next video bye for now please consider heading to the link at the bottom of the screen or in the description box down below and consider becoming a patron to the channel or if you'd only like to do a one-time donation head to the link in the pinned comment and consider donating i do not have the current level of funding or reach that people like cnn do or people who do similar content to mine and you guys at the moment are the only people keeping food on the table and the lights on so if you'd like to keep the channel going please consider heading to those links